Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical system. We have the square root of x plus the square root of y is equal to 3, and then the square root of x plus 5 plus the square root of y plus 3 is equal to 5. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. So let's see how this goes. I'll be presenting two approaches, and let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and square both sides in the first equation. So start with square root of x plus square root of y equals 3. And then we're going to go ahead and square both sides. So let's do that. Square both sides. And from the formula, we get x plus y plus 2 times the square root of xy is equal to 9. That's going to be our first equation. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Let's start with this. This is equal to 5, as you know. And let's square both sides. When we square both sides, we get x plus 5, y plus 3, and then the 2ab, which is their product, which I'm going to write under a single radical like this. And then it's going to equal 25. Great. We can go ahead and add 5 and 3. That gives us an 8. And subtract it from 25. That gives us the following. x plus y plus 2 times the square root of x plus 5 multiplied by y plus 3 equals 25 minus 8, which is 17. Okay? So far, so good. Let's go ahead and copy the other equation that we got by squaring. That gives us x plus y plus 2 times xy equals 9. So, now we have a different system. But the good thing about this system is that we can actually eliminate some of the stuff. Like what? We can actually go ahead and subtract these equations. So, let's go ahead and negate the second one. Minus, 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 and minus. And then we're going to add the opposite. In other words, we're going to be subtracting these two equations. x and y are going to cancel out. We're going to get 2 times the square root of x plus 5 multiplied by y plus 3. And then minus 2 times the square root of xy equals 17 minus 9, which is equal to 8. Obviously, you can divide both sides by 2. That's going to give you the square root of x plus 5 times y plus 3 minus the square root of xy equals 4. Great. But we still have two variables and a single equation. How is that helpful, right? So here's what we can do. We can actually try to eliminate more out of this. And to do that, instead of squaring both sides, I'm going to do something else first. And the reason behind that is I want these two things to be on opposite sides. And you're going to see why it's helpful in a little bit. So let's go ahead and add the square root of xy to both sides. Let's going to put that on the right-hand side along with the 4. And then we're going to square both sides, okay? Once they're on different sides, you can do the squaring. Now, when we square the left-hand side, it's going to be fairly simple, right? We're going to get x plus 5 times y plus 3. Great. On the right-hand side, we're going to get xy, which is good, plus 16. Again, that's a sum, plus 2ab thing, which is 8 times the square root of xy. Beautiful. Now, it's going to get even more beautiful if you expand it. Let's do that. xy plus 3x plus 5y plus 15 is equal to xy plus 16 plus 8 times the square root of x. But now, why is this helpful? Why is this good? Now, take a look. xy cancels out. And we can kind of isolate something out of this. If you look at one of the equations that we got before, like maybe this one, right? Let's go ahead and copy that down here so you can see what I'm talking about. x plus y plus 2xy is equal to, what was it? Was it 9? Yes, because it ca came from 3, right? Now, how is this helpful? Well, if you take a look at it, if you can isolate this in terms of xy, then we can plug it in here, and that's going to give us a relationship between x and y, and that's going to be linear. Does that make sense? So here's what I need to do. Subtract 16 to isolate this, so 8 times the square root of xy is going to equal 3x plus 5y plus 15 minus 16. That's going to give us minus 1. And then we're going to divide both sides by 8. Make sense? Great. Now we have the square root of xy equals 3x plus 5y minus 1 all over 8. 
Great. Now we can go ahead and plug it in here. You see that? So it's going to give us x plus y, x plus y plus 2 times the square root of x, y, which can be written as follows, right, from here, and the whole thing is equal to 9. Beautiful. Let's multiply everything by 8, 8x plus 8y plus, when we multiply by 8, that's just going to cancel out. We can distribute the 2, 6x plus 10y minus 2, and don't forget to multiply by 8. That's going to give you 72. Beautiful. Now, we can go ahead and combine like terms, these two and those two. It's going to give us 14x plus 18y. And if you add 2 to both sides, that's going to give you 74. We can divide both sides by 2. That's the greatest common factor. 7x plus 9y is equal to 37. Do you like that? Well, if you want to guess at this point, like the values of x and y, because we kind of got like a Diophantin equation, if x and y are integers, what do you think is going to happen, right? Do you, think, do you think x and y are integers? Possibly. So you can go ahead and test some values out, but that's not what I'm going to do, because I'm after something bigger. What is that? I want to use this expression to solve for x and y. How can I do that? Well, we kind of need to go back to one of our equations. Now, we were able to find the square root of x, y in terms of x, y something, right? Is that something we can use? in the original problem. Let's take a look, right? So we do have this equation now, x plus y plus 2 times the square root of x, y is equal to 9. And that's actually what we use to get that, right? So if we just plug it in, we should be getting something similar. So we need to do something different. So first of all, this is what I'm thinking. Can we do this? Replace or Instead, uh, let me erase this. I don't want you to get confused. Actually, can we solve for y? Let's try that. 9y is equal to 37 minus 7x. And from here, y becomes 37 minus 7x divided by 9. Great. This is something that I should be able to use somehow, right? Well, if you look at one of these equations again, do you think this is going to help? I think so. After squaring this, what did we get? x plus y plus 2 times the square root of xy, at least we can try, right, equals 9. Oh, by the way, we squared both sides and we, we came up with this. We can actually get rid of all the radicals by doing the following. We can just go ahead and, you know, write it this way. It's better for squaring both sides. We can square both sides again because our goal is to get rid of all the radicals, no radicals, okay? This gives us 4xy equals. Now, we've got to be careful. This is 81. This is x plus y squared, and now you're going to have the 2ab minus 18 times x plus y. What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and use this. Replace y with 37 minus 7x over 9. Let's do that everywhere. 4x times y, which is 37 minus 7x over 9. Notice that this is going to replace y here, so we know what we're doing. 81 plus x plus y, x plus y. y will be replaced with this, right? And then square it. Of course, and y will be replaced with that again. So we're going to get something like this. Same idea, right? Once you simplify that, you're going to realize that's 9x minus 7x, which is 2x. 2x plus 37 over 9 squared. And then minus the same thing, 2x plus 37 over 9. And then 81 plus. Notice that this equation is quadratic. Beautiful, right? You can go out and solve for x, plug it in, solve for y, so on and so forth. But that's such a long process. Well, at least... I wanted to show you how this works. You don't have to use it. It's just a method. Usually the first method is longer and very painful, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at a better idea. Now, how can we solve this problem differently? Now, here's the thing. Substitution coming to the rescue. Great. Now let's go ahead and call this A and call this B. So square root of X is equal to A and square root of Y is equal to B. This implies that X can be written as A squared and y can be written as b squared. Beautiful. How is that helpful? Well, first of all, it kind of linearizes the equation instead of a radical. You're not dealing with a linear equation, which is much better. In the second case, things are a little different. We're going to replace x with that. So it's going to be the square root of a squared plus 5. And then this is going to be the square root of y, which is b squared plus 3. And that's going to be equal to 5. Now, Take a look at this system. This system is actually much better than what we started with and much better than what we got with the first method. Why? 
Let's take a look. You can substitute B can be replaced with 3 minus A here. And we're going to get the following. The square root of A squared plus 5 plus the square root of B squared B is going to be replaced with 3 minus A from the linear equation that I just talked about, remember? And this is equal to 5, a single variable, and we should be able to solve it. Of course, you don't want to keep things on the same side. Maybe simplify a tiny bit. This should give you 9 plus 3, which is 12, right? And then plus A squared minus 6A, right? And then this should equal 5. Now, this is probably a good idea. Let me just go ahead and isolate this bigger guy here and put the other smaller radical, smaller looking, on the other side. And then square both sides. This should do the trick, hopefully, right? By the way, uh, if we didn't have A in the equation, we could just go back to substitution, but I don't think that's going to work anyways. So this gives us A squared minus 6A plus 12. This gives us 25 plus A squared plus 5, and then minus 10 times the square root of A squared plus 5. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel out the A squared. Yay, that's amazing, isn't it? Let's put this guy on the left-hand side so it can have a positive coefficient and bring everything else to the right-hand side. So this is at 30. Minus 12 is going to be 18. We're going to have 6A plus 18 on the right-hand side. If I didn't make any mistakes, you can divide everything by 2. 5 times the square root of a squared plus 5 is equal to 3a plus 9, even better. And now you can go ahead and square both sides one last time. This is 25 times a squared plus 5. This is 9a squared. By the way, I could have taken out a 3, no big deal, plus uh, 81 plus 54a. Great. This is another quadratic equation, easy to solve, 25a squared plus 125 equals 9a squared plus 81 plus 40, 54a. Since 25 is bigger, let's go ahead and bring these over here. 16a squared, bring this over, minus 54a. 125 minus 81 is 44, right? And guess what? We can divide everything by 2 again. 8a squared minus 27a plus 22 is equal to zero. I'm not sure if this is a good idea because another approach could be something like this. Well, 54 is not divisible by 4, but guess what? I think you should be able to solve this equation. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you guys. And I hope you don't mind because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out Cybermath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.